happy, and I'm so, so honored to be here tonight with you, for you, in any way that I can be of service, I wanted to be here. Just like all of you, I am here to celebrate history in the making. And I know that there were some comedians on before me, but I'm going to take a more serious route. I love you! I would like to thank everyone from the Supreme Court to every legislator and political leader that has ever stood with us, with you. I congratulate all of you as we assemble here on the pier. Tonight truly gives a new meaning to Pier Queen. I'm so fortunate to have been welcomed by all of you into the LGBT community, into this family. And this family from, a, from the very young age to the elders of this community, they share their stories with me daily. I listen to their stories and I understand more of the history and I marvel at how our civil rights movement is a continuum. It is ongoing. It is so brave. It was born like you to survive. Our evolution as LGBT citizens and allies continues to change and we see that the, few, the further we are able to reveal and share our lives, the further we move into the hearts, into the minds of other Americans. Everyone that came out to your family, thank you. Everyone who came out to their friends and to their co-workers, even though they were afraid. Everyone who was fearless to tell their very brave story. This change is happening because of you. Yeah! The ones who had the courage to challenge, to mobilize, to take action and to inspire a movement. A movement that was in a place of feeling lesser than to now a visible, powerful, organized, peaceful, and loving community that demands full equality! Full protections and safety, safety guaranteed to us under the law. We want nothing less than every other American. I'm here tonight, I'm here tonight for my heroes to honor my heroes. And luckily, I have many to look up to and many to look at tonight. We're here for our activists and our icons, from Harvey Milk, to Bayard Rustin, to Frank Kemney, Larry Kramer, act up the gay liberation, to Rita Mae Brown and Susan B. Anthony, right up to the real warrior of the weekend, Edith Windsor. And of course, another great icon, Cher. When I was a young girl, I hope I'm still kind of young, 
college. But when, when I was in high school, in grade school, and younger, I was considered to be an outcast. And I just, I just couldn't find my place. Where did I fit in? When I look back on that time, I remember feeling that I was cut from a different mold. I wasn't naturally thin like most of my female classmates. My Italian heritage showed its stronghold in my nose. And I found it very, very hard during this time to maintain any healthy friendships, a healthy sense of self. Me too. I felt no sense of value. And that depression, that shame, it carried me into my 20s, even into my career. And although during this pivotal time of growth, I didn't find that normal acceptance I thought I would have in school. There was a particular crowd who did accept me. There was a particular crowd who made room for me at their table, who held me up when I felt I couldn't, who loved me, for exactly who I was. It was you. And to stand here equal to you tonight, it's been a dream of mine since my very first experiences with the LGBT community when I was just a little girl in dance school. I've always had, since then, this strange relationship with God. I didn't know if God was real or what God meant. I certainly didn't know what he meant to America. And it was because I felt so damaged, so destroyed, so degraded by those kids at school, by my own psychological struggles, my body, by men in the business who only wanted me for sex and money, as I tried to keep a famous face and carry on. But then it was you, it was you that saved me. You saved me, my friends in the LGBT community, time and time again. And, in, and I saw God for the first real time in all of you. You were sent to me like, like angels to protect me and to save me. It was you that understood my need to hide behind the wigs, the glasses, the glamour of the clothing, the fantasy that set me free, my passion for theater, my passion for art, my worth as a woman, what is transcendental God for many is for me, for me real every day because I get to be with you. I get to see God every day when I'm with you. My passion for freedom runs between us, connected. It's like a, a vein, and I'm yours. And if you'll have me, you always be mine. I wanted to thank my heroes who are here tonight, my friends, Frederick, who does my hair. <laughs> <laughs> and 
Brandon, poor Brandon. Oh, um, does my clothes. <laughs> All of the late night talks and the tears. Never wanting anything from me other than our deep friendship. Your ability to heal a broken phoenix with all your magic and transform me back into a swamp. So many of you, you are geniuses at this. And you are the reason that I am so strong today. The strength, the perseverance, I feel it. Because you've never given up on you, I knew I could never give up on me. I'm here for the youth and their rights to be a visible figure for them in any way that I can be. To help them become the best individuals that they can, with no limits on their potential, on their future. That's why I started the Born This Way Foundation with my mom. Here tonight, Cynthia Cindy Lou. That's why, that's how I, why I released my album, Born This Way. I wanted to remind the world, the whole world, of the cultural relevance and the importance of this community. We are not a niche, we are part of a big giant part of humanity and it's time for us to be mainstream although we will party and celebrate tonight i just want to remind you that gay pride started as a rally so let's rally on one on one issue so repeat the last word of every phrase for me. We are the continuum. continuum. We are ongoing. ongoing. We continue the spirit of the first official gay rally in 1970 in New York, one year after Stonewall. Stonewall. And although this weekend is a time for victory, I am a citizen of New York. New York. And I demand the rights to safe streets. safe streets. The violence that has taken place towards LGBTs in the past months is unacceptable here and anywhere. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. But tonight will be our night. And now we can marry it if we want to. Yeah. It's our win. Doesn't it feel nice to win for a change? Yeah. And before I go, I just wanted to thank you for the honor of kicking off the Heritage Pride. Okay, just a second. I'm not finished. nice to tell you. So listen up. First I wanted to say thank you for all you do. And it's my LGBT friends and fans who always said to me, I knew Lady Gaga when. Well, look who the star is now. to say that I knew you when. Now I get to say I knew you when, when you suffered, when you felt unequal, when you felt there was nothing to look forward to. I knew you then, and I knew you when, but I really know you now. Yeah.